All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rubia. I hope you're all doing extremely well today. In this video, we're going to be looking at a brand new Synergy module. Synergy amps are a company based out on the west coast of the US, and it's a collection of different amp builders that have come together to create their own little ecosystem of uh, modular uh, preamps and amplifiers. So I've already done a video all about Synergy amps with one of their sort of amp heads and a couple of different modules. We looked at the Bogner, Uberschall, and Ecstasy uh, modules. So I'll put a link in the description box below. That tells you more or less everything about how Synergy amps works, how the integration works with their own amplifiers. But in this video, we're looking at a slightly different product. So we've got a new uh, preamp, which is the Fryette Deliverance preamp, which we're gonna take a look at in a moment. But we're also housing it in the Synergy SYN1, this awesome little housing for any of the Synergy preamp modules, which allow you to insert the preamp modules into the effects loop of an amplifier, which is really cool. In a similar way to the Victory V4 series, how you can get the Kraken, put it in the uh, effects loop of any amplifier and essentially slave any amplifier's power section and run that preamp, it's exactly the same with this. Use SYN1 into the effects loop of any amplifier to use its power section and you can get that kind of raw valve power but use any preamp module you want. So it's really, really cool. And the other cool thing with this is that it allows you to do a couple of extra things. Like it's got a cab sim out, XLR line out on the back. It's got its own effects loop uh, and it's all nicely laid out with all the instructions of where to plug what into. So obviously this runs to the effects send and return of the amplifier, but it also runs into the front end of the amplifier and I plug straight in here. You get a two button foot switch or there's a couple of buttons on the front that allow you to change the channel of the whatever preamp you're running into this or uh, bypass the SYN1 from the effects loop, allowing you to use your amplifier as you normally would, everything the same. And then when you, when you turn on the SYN1, it takes over bypasses the preamp of your amplifier and runs it into the power amp section. So hopefully that made sense. Hopefully John was able to edit that into a nice concise manner for you all to understand because it's really straightforward, but it's a very cool way of doing things these days. And that's why cool products like this turn up. So in terms of the preamp we're looking at in this video, this is the Fryet Deliverance. Fryet are an amplifier brand been around for a long, long time. They do some really cool stuff. They also one of the uh, have one of the coolest load boxes that I've not actually had the chance to try, but I've been told many good things. Anyway, Fryat Deliverance. So as you can see on the close-up camera, the module in question is here. This is the Fryat Deliverance module. We'll go through that first. So you got two channels, you got two bright switches on each channel, and you've got two gains on each channel, which suggests to me that this is somewhat like uh, you kind of plexi super lead head. So you get two gains that affect different areas of the gain or you know like high and low gain and stuff, and you can really blend in different levels of that. So that's cool. Then next to that, you've got more on both channels, which essentially means more gain. And then we move on to the EQ section. So you've got treble, mid and bass. Then you've got underneath that presence and resonance. And then you've got channel volume for both. And that's essentially it. Aside from the fact you've got this tiny little toggle switch here, which assigns a boost to either the first channel or the second channel, which is really nice. Overall, this preamp is gain laden, but you can also get some nice glassy cleans from it as well if you run it low gain with the volume up. Something else just to bear in mind is that we are running the power section of the Friedman BE100. Now, obviously some of you are gonna say, well, that's like a 4,000 pound amplifier. I'm aware of that. However, in my opinion, it doesn't necessarily matter what amp you use because we're just running it into the effects loop using the power section of it. I just wanted an EL34 power section, which the Friedman is, and it's 100 watts. But if you're gonna do that, bear in mind that the master volume on any amplifier is running the power section. So I've put the master volume of that amp at halfway, running into the Oxbox, uh, running a V30 cabinet model in the Oxbox, and a little bit of reverb and delay. But we're gonna be getting everything tone-wise out of this bad boy. So a couple of other things just to bear in mind with the SYN1, obviously we've seen the close-ups and we know what this thing does, but just on the front, how it affects the amplifier. If you're running the line out, that is the volume, uh, but we're not, so we don't need to worry about that. 
These are the two little buttons that basically act as the two button foot switch, which we've currently got plugged in, so we won't be using those. But this is SAG. This is the SAG control. This essentially adds SAG to the power section. Uh, what that means is it's kind of like natural power section compression, basically give you a different feel, a little bit of a different response. You'll notice it mostly on like a high gain thing, it might start to feel chewier. But if you're running it on a clean, you might just notice that notes jump out a little bit more with less SAG. That's all it is. So let's crack on. So in this video, I'm going to be using my Chapman ML3 beer Carthus Burst with the bare knuckle in the bridge and the little 59 in the neck. We'll also use a strap because why not? But I figured that it's a modern sort of preamp, so let's use a modern sort of guitar. So let's start on the first channel. I'm running this low gain, as you can see, with the master or the sort of channel volume much higher. We've got no sag engaged, we've got no bright switch engaged, no more switch engaged, no boost engaged. And you can see here, this is my EQ. So that's my treble, middle and bass. And then underneath that is presence and resonance. Anyway, let's check it out. So a beautiful glassy sort of clean channel. There was loads of information in that tone because you know obviously we're running the gain low and the volume high, uh, but it sounds really really good. Something I wanted to show you and demonstrate here is the bright switch. So you may have noticed I was using like a split coil tone. That sounds really nice. Let's move over to the neck of a, so this is a humbucker. It's gonna be a little less defined. It's really nice, but if I throw the bright switch in, Back off a little bit of mid. So as you could hear, it really did brighten up the channel. It allowed me to get a little more definition and articulation out of uh, my pickups. Uh, the same thing with the middle position, I'll just quickly demonstrate without it. Throw it in there. So I really love what that's doing to the overall tone. Having that there is, is really handy. I would expect that if I was using a Strat, I would probably not have that engaged, but something like Humbuckers, you want that there. It's, it's really handy, so I like that. So this is Bridge Pickup. Yeah, really, really chimey and lovely. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back off the volume a little bit. I'm gonna start bringing in some of the gain. So, let's start here. And the way you wanna think about amps like this, or should I say, you know, preamps or whatever it is you're using that has two gains that run in tandem like this, you kinda of wanna get a nice balance between the two. One's gonna be more guttural and one's gonna be like more higher endy. Um, so you wanna kind of find the nice blend that you like there. So let's take off the bright switch for now. Bit of that, bit more presence. Right, I'm going to throw the bright switch on with this sound. So, 
There we go. Some really barking British rock kind of vibes there. Loving it. If I turn up the gain a little bit more, we've got the bright switch still in. Uh, check this out. So I've grabbed the Strat, I decided that I'd put it on gain one and just gun everything just to show you what it sounds like really. I don't expect it to be like balls to the wall gain, but at the same time, you know, low output guitar and uh, the, the first channel, but yeah, basically this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So we're getting into the hard rock sort of high gain territory here, even on the first channel. Now if I just turn both gains on full. That is a guttural, powerful sound. I'm just gonna turn the volume down a touch. Let's throw in a little bit of the sag. Notice how it's pulling sort of the higher and lower frequencies together, so it's all starting to get a little bit more uh, grainy. So this is without. Nice barking sort of roar at the low mid, and then you turn it to halfway. You can notice the little LED coming on telling you it's working. Back out again. And then all the way in. It's actually a little easy to play like that. So I'm really loving the way this is sounding. I'm just going to back the gain down and we're going to show you what the more switch does. Right, so let's put it, let's say halfway like this. And then here comes the more switch. Oh, it sounds great. Let's turn up the gain. Yes, it sounds great. I'm really, really liking this. It's it's kind of boomy in a good way. It's like really powerful, roaring British kind of high gain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, gains on full, it's had a little bit of sagging and yeah, check this out. <laughs> Is 
sounds really, really killer. I'm gonna take the gain back down. So that's where the gain is. And let's take the sagging back. Right, let me show you what the boost does. Here comes the boost. So, pushes the mids out, tightens up the low end a bit, gives you a little bit more saturation and sort of sustain and that sort of thing. So, check it out. So that would be channel one with the boost, the gain on full. I kind of just went to town on that because I was just really loving it. So gain one, channel one, should I say, sounds fantastic. It's it's uh, kind of punchier, more guttural, a little less in the top end like articulation. Um, but it's a great rocking channel. It sounds really, really fat. We'll come back to that with the strap. Okay, let's check out the second channel. So for the sake of experimentation and to demonstrate the sound of each channel's differences, uh, I've mimicked sort of the, the, the gain of each channel, uh, the volume and all that kind of stuff. I've taken the bright switch and the more switch out and we're just gonna jump between the two so you can hear it. So this is the first channel. And here comes channel two. Might be slightly off on my volume, ever so slightly. Notice how the second channel has a little bit more brightness in it. You can hear in the top end sizzle if I ring out a chord. One's more barky, one's more full in the mid-range, and one's more scooped out a little bit with, with more high-end. So, you can tell this is going to be more of a sort of shreddy, sort of aggressive channel. So the cool thing about these channels, again, like I said, you can sort of find a nice balance between the two gains. So if I wanted like a high headroom, uh, again, sort of cleany thing, I could back off. These might be more of a crunch now. <laughs> What's nice about this channel having a little bit more, less low end and a little more top end is it works better for humbuckers. So now if you threw the bright switch on with that, it'd probably be too much. Yeah, a little bit too pokey for me, but it's nice for... So I like that, I like that discovery. I'm just gonna back down the volume and let's punch up some of the gain. what the boost does if I back off the gain here comes the boost again pulls the mids out it's nice and barky without and again
So Gain 2 has all the things that I love, especially like that palm muted chug. <laughs> You know, there's a certain thing that you can do that really pulls out that punch. Yeah, basically it's great for palm muting. Let's throw on some of the sag. I actually prefer less of the sag because although it gives you a little bit more gain, a little more power and girthiness, at the same time it's like, I actually prefer it with less. Um, anyway, let's back down the gain, take off the boost, uh, like so. And then throw on the bright switch. Without it. And then back on. And then take it out. Back in. It's a subtle one, but again, it's a it's got that little extra bit of like bark to it when you throw it on. So it's a nice, it's a nice feature. At this point, let's try this. More gain. Absolutely, all day, channel two, with quite a lot of gain, the bright and the more uh, switch pushed in, it feels and sounds awesome. It's totally that 80s hair metal shred, Nuno Bettencourt kind of Van halen -y. For me, at least, that's how it feels. It's super nice to play. <laughs> I decided to grab the strap for channel two as well. I've taken the bright switch out. I don't think it needs it, but we've got the more gain in, all the gain on full, bit of sagging going on and the boost. So just to show you what it sounds like, here we go.
is a pretty kicking Strat Riff Rock tone right there. I'm well impressed with that. So at this point in the demo, aside from the fact that I think this thing sounds absolutely insane and I really love how small and awesome and tweakable it is, I think my main, the main selling point for me with technology like this, like preamps and stuff, is that when you insert them into other amplifiers and use them with their through mode, like in this case, when you turn this on, it takes over the front end, like the V4 Kraken stuff and the V4 Victory stuff, when you turn them on, they take over the amplifier and use the power section. I love that because I could be running like a Fender Twin and then turn this on and get these kind of tones from a Fender Twin and then turn it off and then go back to my cleans from my Fender Twin. It's just like an amazing, awesome, you know, tool really. And depending on what you do with your music careers, whether it's, you know, whether you play just for fun or you're a touring musician that needs to get loads of different tones. And again, you don't want to jump into having loads of different menus and stuff to go for. You could just sit this on top of your amp, run the foot switch alongside your pedal board and essentially just take over your amp and get all different sounds. So yeah, I am using a Freeman B100 and so that the tones are not too dissimilar between these two things. However, if I turn it off, I can just have the, 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 the clean sound of the B100. Turn it on and then just get soaring high gain. So you get the idea. I think it's a great product. I like the fact it's small. I like the fact that it's got a line out on the back, so you don't necessarily need to do the whole effects loop thing into a cab. You could literally run this into your computer, load up your own cab software, whether it's the GGD cab stuff or the Fractal Cab Lab or whatever it is, or the Wall of Sound Torpedo stuff, and then just run this without the cab sim on. You could do it that way. You could do it the effects loop way. You know, there are so many different ways to hook this thing up and get tones out of it. But the thing I love is that obviously you can remove the preamp and change it out for something else. So that's what I love about the SYN1. But the Fryer Deliverance is just savage. It's a, it's a really great preamp. Like you can get glassy cleans, high headroom glassy cleans, crunches, hard rock crunches, brick rock, like thick, powerful martial tones all the way through to soaring sort of high gain 80s, high gain lead tones. And then when you use a Strat, you can get thick, disgusting Strat tone. Basically, it's a really good, really good preamp. I hope you agree. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Um, but yeah, you should check this stuff out if you get half a chance or you have any opportunity to play through it or test it yourself. It's definitely worth it because it's really impressive technology. Thank you for watching this video. Thanks to Synergy for sending this over. Um, and let me know what you think in the comments section below. And of course, links in the description box. Like, subscribe and share. I've been Rabir and I will see you all very soon.